Hello and welcome to this episode of the Diary of a Lawyer. And just quickly, want to cover yet again in a few days. Um, this room court has made yet uh, another ruling that is um, basically triggering conversations and various reaction and description. Uh, the former Attorney General, Bama's Attorney General, Eric Holder is quoted as having called this stupid, as, at least as reported in some newspapers. Now, a federal court district judge who was a Trump appointee issued an injunction that prohibits agencies and individuals in the Biden administration from talking to social media executives about content moderation or even flagging content or posts and then forwarding them to Twitter or Facebook. The order, which seemingly applies to hundreds of thousands of people in various uh, Trump judges, using their lifetime positions to prosecute right-wing cultural obsessions rather than objectively interpreting the Constitution. The decision uh, from Judge Terry Doughty of the Western District of Louisiana is not a final ruling, uh, it's just an injunction. Um, but according to observers, the, the, the heft and tone of the text gives an indication of how he might ultimately decide. Now, observers state that there's a certain kind of Trump judge who, seem, who seems fully uh, enmeshed in the what they call the Fox Extended Cinematic Universe. <laughs> and whose idea of seeking out conflicting information means subscribing to a handful of substacks by writers who have made their fame and fortune off their own what is called apocryphal cancellation. Now the plaintiffs in this case are the attorneys general of Louisiana and Missouri as well as a handful of individuals including Jim Hoft, a, a, aka the gateway pundit and they allege that the federal government officials improperly coerced or pressured social media companies into censoring conservative speech now Doughty claims that by asking that certain posts be taken down and individuals banned the decision is essentially that of the government quote unquote and thus tantamount to official censorship and the injunction then uh, prohibits a long list of federal agencies as well as some specific individuals, including some former Biden administration COVID coordinator, uh, and Slavit, and others who no longer actually work for the federal government from communicating with social media companies about content moderation policies. The document is described as le reading like um, got written by the um, Twitter CEO, according to the media, and various, uh, which mentions Hunter buys a laptop, among various other matters. Uh, it's also, um, the ruling is also described as uh, rife with declarations such as if the allegation made by plaintiffs are true uh, wrote, the present case arguably involves the most massive attack against free speech in the United States um, furthermore uh, the it, uh, states that the government uh, was politely requested that Twitter take down the um, some of the views um, associated with uh, sort of what is said to be uh, conspiracy theories. So um, it, it, the decision is causing a lot of uh, concern um, given that um, uh, it is the right of the executive to have constructive discussions with um, uh, parties they think have a level of moral and ethical responsibility in terms of what is what their platforms um, put out, especially 
if it may involve incitement or, or uh, racism or extreme um, uh, e extreme nature that that um, potentially uh, puts in peril uh, the safety uh, of the public or other individuals, which again is a, is also a, something that the U.S. Constitution takes consideration of. So um, we're talking about things like harassment, uh, threats, um, and other uh, ins insightful rhetoric that may pe put people in harm's way. And so it is important to mention this is just an injunction. It's a first step. Uh, and we shall wait and see how that develops. Uh, thank you for listening. We shall speak again.